215. Members of the House can only be re replaced by special elections. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has already scheduled the Florida special elections for Matt Gaetz's seat and for Mike Wall's seat for April 1st of next year. New York Governor Kathy Hochul will schedule a special election to replace Elise Stefanik, and that will be a minimum of 90 days now. Every day, Senate Republicans make it more clear that the 53 Senate Republicans in next year's Senate do not agree on Trump nominees. And there are definitely not enough Republican senators who agree with Donald Trump on Pete Hickson. NBC News has reported that at least six Republican senators are not willing to vote for Pete Hegseth's confirmation on the Senate floor. It takes only four Republican senators to join the Democrats to defeat the nomination if it makes it to the Senate floor. The Wall Street Journal has reported that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is on Donald Trump's list of possible replacements for Pete Hegseth. NBC News reports that that list now also includes Iowa Republican Senator Joni Ernst, who said in terms clear enough for anyone who's ever worked in the Senate to understand, she is not voting for Pete Hegseth. She, of course, didn't say those exact words after her private meeting with Pete Hegseth today, which she promised, as we reported here last night, would be, her words, a frank and thorough conversation. There are many things she could have said about that conversation today. She could have said, we had a good conversation. That's what most senators say about every conversation with a nominee, including the nominees they vote against. A senator has to say something more positive than we had a good conversation to indicate that the senator is actually supporting the nominee. It is very common for senators to say, I fully support the nominee. And Joni Ernst has said that about other Trump nominees. Senator Joni Ernst, who's now on the list to replace the nominee, said this about her meeting with Pete Hegseth today. Can you surprise it, Bill? It was a very frank word. So will you support Mr. Hegseth's nomination? It was a frank and conversation. Did he ask you for your vote specifically? Thank you. When you met with Matt Gates, you said he brought up some of the allegations against him. Did he no, exit bring up any of these things? It was a very thorough conversation. And also Frank. Did he your concerns? Did he meet any of your concerns? Keep walking on the air. Guys, need a pathway. You need to be able to walk. You need to be able to walk. Right. Can you answer your upcoming consideration as defense secretary, Senator? As you have no doubt seen, there are many variations on the Senate walk and talk with reporters. The rarest of all is actually walking in absolute silence. Most senators absolutely never do that. The speed of the walk tells you how much a senator wants to talk to reporters. Joni Ernst was walking as fast as she can, which means she did not want to talk to those reporters. She didn't want to answer those questions. She would have loved to come out of a meeting with a Trump nominee saying, this is the greatest nominee for Secretary of Defense I've ever seen. She would have loved to please Donald Trump, but she couldn't. She wasn't going to come out of that meeting and get into an open war with Donald Trump in front of her Trump-supporting constituents, so she kept it in Senate speak. Question, Senator, will you support Mr. Hegseth's nomination? Ernst, it was a frank and thorough conversation. That's a no. She was asked a yes or no question about supporting Donald Trump's choice for Secretary of Defense, and she did not say yes, and everyone in the Senate knows that that answer was a no. That's where she is today. When Joni Ernst votes against the nomination in the Senate Armed Services Committee, the nomination will not be sent to the floor of the Senate from the committee. A nomination that is defeated in a committee or stopped in the committee with a tie vote still can be voted on on the Senate floor, but it requires a special procedure to bring it up on the Senate floor. It's more complicated. If the Hegseth nomination makes it to the Senate floor, you can count on Republican Senators Joni Ernst, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, both of whom are scheduled to meet with Pete Hegseth next week, to vote against the Hegseth nomination. Republican Senator Deb Fischer, who is also on the Armed Services Committee, will probably vote against the nomination in the committee and on the Senate floor. Mitch McConnell, no longer in the leadership, will now be free to vote against nominations like this.
For the first time in history, a nominee for Senate confirmation had to send his mother out to try to save his nomination on TV. Pete Hegseth's mother, Penelope Hegseth, was warmly welcomed into the Fox studio where her son used to work, where she discussed an email that she sent to her son seven years and two wives ago, back when he was married to his second of three wives. The email from mother to son said, you are an abuser of women, that is the other. Do you believe it's more likely or less likely that he gets confirmed than it was 24 or 48 hours ago? Oh, I think it's more likely now. I, I don't know if you got the opportunity to watch his mother on, on Fox today, this morning, but she did just a phenomenal job, put a lot of those questions to rest, uh, and, and he's up here working hard, and, and the more he meets with people, as I said, the more positive response we get. You know, a lot of the concern that, that we have been hearing lately from Republicans hasn't really been on the sexual assault allegation that was, you know, the initial complaint that was made against him, but has more centered around the allegations of about excessive drinking. And, and today, Pete Hexeth assured the incoming chair of the, the Armed Services Committee that you sit on, Roger Wicker, that, that he would stop drinking altogether if he were confirmed. I mean, what conversations have you had with him uh, about that? Did he tell you that he that he has stopped drinking? You know, uh, he's been very successful in his life since he left the, left the military. Yes, he's had some personal issues, but I have a lot of, of friends that were combat veterans uh, that's, you know, at some point in their life uh, may have had some may have had some difficulties with with uh, with drinking. But life has changed; they've changed, uh, and that's in the past. And I believe Pete's the same way. Pete's is in his. Uh, I've known Pete for a long time. I served with him in Afghanistan. Uh, the people over there said nothing but great things about him. The allegations against Pete are all anonymous, anonymous sources. I am not going to make any decision based on an anonymous source. If you're not willing to raise your hand under oath and make the accusation, it doesn't count. I've heard everything about all these people. None of it counts. No rumors, but, no but innuendo. But you were there for the Kavanaugh hearings. I mean, I've seen remember. this movie before. Well, it was, it was a bunch of anonymous sources, and the people that did come forward, it made no sense. They were trying to destroy Judge Kavanaugh's life. The accusations being made are anonymous, but if people do raise their right hand and claim something bad happened, I will listen to them. It's up to the nominee to go through the committee and answer hard questions. It's my belief that presidents deserve their cabinet unless there's a good reason to say no. All I can say is that Democrats want to talk about confirmation drama. I want to talk about securing the border and cutting taxes. This is a diversion, but I will say this, that the confirmation process for both sides, uh, it, it, you should find out who you're putting in these important jobs, and time will tell if there's anything serious here. Allegations that are anonymous don't count. Well, I think uh, I'm on Judiciary Committee. Pam Bondi will... Uh, will come out of the committee with all Republicans and I think some Democrats because she's an incredibly qualified person, very ethical, former Attorney General of uh, Florida, no better pick for Attorney General. Cash Patel, uh, counterterrorism prosecutor, understands the government and if the FBI doesn't need to be cleaned out, what does? So yeah, he'll make it out of committee. I don't know if he'll get any Democrats, but I think he, he'll get all Republicans. I'm a big fan of his doors to be FBI director. Uh Let's blame the media. Prices up in the supermarket. Let's blame the media. Uh, you're late for work. Let's blame the media. Uh, maybe your kids do something to annoy you. Let's blame the media. Somebody in your family pees you off. Let's blame the media. Because uh, that's this is the gameplay that Pete Hexef is rolling out. I was once drunk quite a few times. People at Fox said I'm a drunk. Let's blame the media. We'll blame the legacy media because there's a new buzzword. Legacy media to blame. Pete Hexef is not a drunk. Well, not today, because he's sober today. And uh, mummy's boy has got his, rolled his mum out and she's angry. She's mad furious. <laughs> um, I don't really know what's going on, but the craziest thing about all of this is Hunter Biden has never once blamed the media, yet Hunter Biden would be justified in blaming the media. Imagine.
put your life for one second under a microscope, every single thing you do is magnified by Fox News. Let's just mention the cable news station. You would be justified to blame the media. Yet Pete Hexeff, who's lived the life of being a some type of leader, toy soldier. There we are. Toy soldier Pete Hexeff is a little bit upset because the media are doing their job, uncovered all the shenanigans, a bit like Matt Gates. You're being found out, Pete. And Pete doesn't like it. Pete's having a little tantrum. It's crazy. This is the person that the world will be looking for to show strength, show leadership, defense secretary, whining, whinging. Speak to people who are true patriots, who are ready to lay their lives down for us to be free. They're not whinging and whining and moaning while they're on duty or on service or even former vets. They're proud of themselves. Not desperately clinging to any last vestige of pick me, pick me, pick me. It's like the worst moment in a reality TV show where you know they're having a bad, bad season and they're desperate for the public to come on their side. Pete has fucked up, yeah? Had a drink. There's allegations. But instead of coming out and saying, you know what, made a few mistakes, uh, even apologising. No! He's playing that trump card of deny, deny, deny. Who are they going to wheel out next? Uh, here's Pete Hexeth's dog. He's innocent. Do you know what I mean? It is just embarrassing. But of course at Fox, they've now nailed their colours to the guy who is uh, allegedly, allegedly a rapist, sex offender, a drunk, racist. All of those things that just tick the box as opposed to being a, uh, well... A typical Fox News host, putting their colours up for us to all see. They're not hiding it, by the way. I mean, to be fair, Alex Jones and Pete Hexeff separated at birth. Can you spot the difference? I've got tattoos. Look at my tats. This is the guy. Pete Hexeff is the sort of guy that would shoot the wounded in a war. All right? Talk to real soldiers. Real Absolute people, diamond salt. You could not fool anybody. I don't care about their political views. If anyone has served, they are just brilliant people. Brilliant. All right? They are not Pete Hexeff. Pete Hexeff is like the the doo doo from the back of Sylvester Stallone's. You know those old school Rambo movies. Who Trump still thinks he's in the Rambo or something like? I don't know. Mel Gibson plays a soldier. That's what it is. Oh, fair enough. He can be an extra in a some type of army movie. But Defense Secretary, drop me out. Defense Secretary Carr. When I was growing up, there used to be a thing called Action Man, a little toy, like the equivalent of Barbie. I don't know if you still get Action Man, but my son just knows nothing about Action Man. Dog Man, Action Man, no. Um, Hexef wouldn't even make a good Action Man. He's like, my son's teaching me how to play Roblox. He's not even an extra in a Roblox uh, kind of combat situation. What? I've got a word to sum up Pete Hexeff. It's a very good English word. T-W-A-T. Twat. This is, you know, he was the head of this organization. They did a lot of great work. The concerned Veterans of yes. America. Yeah. yeah they, uh, and after these events, they oftentimes did get together for an after party. And that part of it is true. But the rest of it is not. And that's where the best lies come in, is you take something that is true and then you add additional facts to try and make it more nefarious than it is. And so all of these claims of what he allegedly did during these after parties and you know, the, the alcohol-fueled environment is really exaggerations on something that actually did happen. You know, another example of the story about you know, a strip club, you know, Pete discussed that this morning with Megan, where that did happen. Mm. But it wasn't Pete. He wasn't even there. He wasn't even in the state. You know, some, somebody else had that event, and so they took that event and just changed the name and said, oh, it was Pete, it wasn't, you know, somebody else. So, and that's what a lot of these things are, because you can't corroborate the full claim, 
But if you can corroborate you know, a little piece of the claim, then you know, it makes it seem more realistic than it really was. So I want to ask you about a report um, that broke this afternoon in National Public Radio. David Falkenflick mm -hmm. um, reported that a former colleague at Fox told him that Hegseth got, quote, handsy repeatedly while inebriated uh, once, uh, even groping her bottom at a Manhattan uh, bar. Um, obviously, it's an anonymous allegation. We should note that Falkenflick has been covering sexual assault and sexual right. Harassment at Fox for years. His track record on this is pretty good. But but what is your response? See, and this is the pattern: is that we have all these anonymous complaints where people are saying things they aren't giving any you know specifics. They don't have any corroboration whatsoever. And yet the people who were also there at the time are willing to come on the record by name on camera and say this didn't happen. It's the same thing at CVA. It's the same thing at Fox. It's the same thing you know, at the uh, uh, Veterans for Freedom. Every single one of these. You have a few anonymous people saying it, mm -hmm. and yet the people who come on the record and say, this is my name, this never happened. So um, you represented uh, Pete, you've represented him for eight or nine years, yes. I believe, starting with the Concerned Veterans for America stuff, Correct. That, including the incident in 2017 uh, in Monterey. Mm -hmm. Now, we should note uh, that Pete acknowledges that there was a sexual encounter. He says it was consensual. Correct. The woman uh, had a different story. Um, he did pay her an undisclosed sum. Um, and to some people out there, that might look like, well, that's guilt. That's an admission of guilt. You're his attorney. Explain why you disagree. Sure. It could look like guilt. It could also look like an extortion. And that's the way that I saw it at the time, because this was something that was investigated by the police. The police found no basis whatsoever. In fact, one of the police officers told my investigator that before they interviewed Pete, based on the other witnesses' testimony and the video cameras, they were actually considering charging her with, with being, making a false story or no with being the aggressor in this mm. and taking advantage of him when he had too much to drink and he went in he talked to them and of course you know that kind of ended the idea of charging her but you would fast forward a few years and all of a sudden she comes in with a lawyer saying we're gonna file this we're gonna make it public unless you pay so, and and the reality is unfortunately especially for public figures you know during you know the me too movement a public allegation that somebody had drugged and raped somebody, they're going to get fired immediately. Fox News isn't going to wait two years to find out what happens in court. No, any more than CNN or any other network would, he would have been fired right there. So why do you think this is happening? Why, why do you think there are so many people coming out of the woodwork saying these things that have to do with either sexual or alcoholic uh, impropriety? This is unfortunately one of the things that has happened in this country when people are going for a, a confirmed position. Well, nobody's it, saying this about Marco Rubio. I well, mean, he's, maybe he's going to be next. You know, they started with, uh, you know, they started with the Attorney General, Matt Gates. Now they're focusing on Pete Hegseth. A lot of people, and particularly people like Pete that have, that have lived, you know, that have been out there. I mean, yes, Pete is not an angel. Yes, he's been out there partying a bit. He hasn't done these things. But particularly when it's somebody like him who you know, threatens you know, the institution where people are afraid he might change things too much, he might you know, stop the gravy train, he might get rid of some of the things that, you know, that people you know, there like, they're threatened by him. And so people will come out just as they did for Justice Kavanaugh. And you, know, you start with you know, a few stories and then that begins the avalanche. And so now you have all these fake stories out there and every single one of them has a good factual defense to them, but you know they're hoping that by sheer volume that they could try and convince him to to get out. Is he cooperating with an FBI background check now that the Trump transition has come into this agreement with the Justice Department? Not only is he cooperating, he can't wait to do the FBI background check. He's he's really looking forward to it because he knows, as I know, that FBI investigators are professionals. They're going to go through this. They're going to not just take a few anonymous complaints and put that in the report. They're going to try and corroborate it. The FBI background check is going to exonerate him of the vast majority of these claims. And so he's very much looking forward to that. All right, Tim, always good to see you.
Martha. Well, the president-elect is trying to build out his cabinet, but that process has been a very bumpy one for one of his nominees. That is Defense Secretary nominee Pete Hegseth. Uh, he is visiting with Senator Joni Ernst behind me right now uh, as he tries to gain traction and support here on the Hill. So much so that the Washington Post is now reporting that Hegseth plans to visit with Trump in Mar-a-Lago tomorrow afternoon amid intense scrutiny over allegations of sexual misconduct, a drinking problem, both of which he denies. But I just spoke to Pete Hexeth, and he told me that there is actually no meeting on the schedule with Trump as of right now. Watch this. Hey, Pete, are you looking forward to your meeting with President Trump tomorrow? It's not on the schedule right now. We are staying on Capitol Hill and meeting with senators. All Some day. schedules have reshifted. But all day tomorrow? On the Hill tomorrow to meet with senators. Will you talk with him tomorrow at all? I talk to him all the time. So the president and I have a great relationship. I appreciate his support, and we're going to continue talking to Thank you. And Martha, if there is a conversation with President Trump, it is important in this moment because multiple sources are telling us that Trump is thinking about swapping out Hexeth for Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. The two spoke about it in person down in Florida during a memorial service just yesterday. Uh, but Hexeth says he spoke to Trump this morning and Trump told him to keep on fighting for the men and women in uniform. Now, like I said, he is speaking with Senator Joni Ernst right now. She is a critical senator for him because not only is she uh, a female uh, combat um, veteran, she's also a survivor of sexual assault. So her support will be critical for him to get through this nomination process. Martha. Okay. Uh, interesting. Aisha, thank you very much. So Speaker of the House Mike Johnson joins. I don't think that's a, that's a reason why um, you would, you know, dismiss somebody from a very important role like this. And so. Well, I said the facts and the allegations because the facts of the infidelities of how he has run his personal life are just facts and frankly, as a married man and a father, absolutely disgraceful. But beyond that, um, there are these allegations. He paid hush money to his accuser in California. I've never paid hush money to anybody. Well, he settled a lawsuit um, that again, the, ch the underlying charges were deemed by a prosecutor as baseless and, and those are the facts. But again, I think this is a, uh, um, again, people are entitled to ask these questions. He's entitled to give an answer, and he's answering those questions. And the Senate's going to come together and vote on his, his nomination to lead an agency that has failed another audit, um, that has recruitment problems because it's di dividing the room by race with this divisive, discriminatory DEI agenda that they have. It's been politicized like every other agency under this Biden administration. So Yes, on DeSantis, if he finally admits that he has lifts in his boots, I'm sure he does. So I think uh, like maybe three inches, four inches at least. Yeah. Did you discuss Pete Hexeth with Bondi? Pardon me? Did you discuss Pete Hexeth with Bondi? No. Are you comfortable that he is the right man for the job, Hexeth? I, um, I'm going to let the process uh, work itself out. I've, I've known Pete for a number of years, and uh, so we'll, I haven't uh, had a chance to talk to him since he was nominated, but we'll let the process work itself out. Thank you. Thank you. Kyle Rittenhouse, thank you so much for joining Fox. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Man, it's a privilege to, to shake your hand. Oh, thank you, to sir. To be here with you. Um, I'm a trained infantryman in the U.S. Army, and I've, I've led men in combat. And I, I'll never forget, I was talking to my wife about it. I said, the amount of muzzle discipline and trigger discipline that you showed in that moment is something most elite troops could never muster. Most guys would be flailing around, pointing, shooting 15 rounds when they should be shooting one or two. The natural instinct of, of the moment where you're caught up makes people make mistakes. All the way down to your final engagement, when the rifle was down, it was up, and then it was down. Most people can't do that unless they were trained. What, when you think back on that night, how, how did you keep it together? I mean, one shot is a very difficult thing for anybody to do. And that was a combat-like situation. I don't know. I don't have any like formal combat training. I just know the basics. Don't keep your finger on the trigger and don't point your business end at something that, you know, mm -hmm. don't point your business end like Thomas Binger at the jury. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he violated everything you didn't in one moment in yes. the picture. he has done to this country and to bring us to where we are.
to the point where yeah. we are having a discussion about a guy who is a serial philanderer, who, who is, uh, ha has a drinking problem potentially, according to people around him, who is so rife with potential compromise and so compromised by our enemies because of all of these things, that he, we are having a serious conversation with senators in the United States Senate saying like, let me think about whether he's qualified or not to lead the most important fighting force in the world. It's asinine. Yeah. But that's yeah. what these people are doing. The fact that yeah. Pete Hegseth is even considered speaks volumes not only about Donald Trump's terrible judgment, but everybody around him, that they would be willing to compromise our national security, our standing in the world, the respect of our men and women who wear the uniform, that they, that they, would, they would risk all of that to placate yeah. Donald freaking Trump is a disgraceful yeah. uh, message to send to not only our men and women. In uh, this, is, this is ridiculous well, one, one thing trash. to know that, that Pete Hegseth has actually not denied these things. He's just avoiding questions about them. But you, I'm just really? if, if, if I may, that is a very long article. I agree with you. There's a lot of things that Pete has allegedly done. And whether it is that he's stolen from the organizations he's run, or he has endless drug escapades, or he has white nationalist tattoos, or he's raped women, oh my whatever God. it is that he says I mean, or he has allegedly done. No, I'm well, saying... That was I'm saying that hold was on, reported. that's all reported, Ridiculous. but here's what I'm saying. Ridiculous. The biggest thing people need to understand... I don't think you're ashamed of yourself. Can, if I may. Let me just correct one thing. I don't think there were White nationalist that, tattoos? You mean hold Christian on, tattoos? Hold on. He didn't... It did, the allegation was not that he stole from the organizations, but that he mismanaged, mismanaged the money. Continue. So, I would say the biggest thing to remember is that the Secretary of Defense is involved in every issue of our national security. Involved in... I don't know why you're laughing. Involved in the use of nuclear weapons, is sending our troops oh. into combat, approving drone strikes. There are literal life and death issues in the hands of the U.S. Secretary of Defense every day. And... On the alcohol alone, you cannot give someone a job like that who has a drinking problem. Someone who might be incapacitated for multiple You're reasons. You continue to defame the moment. guy. You don't this know is, him. You don't know he has a drinking problem. I'm not, what he said, what I'm he said. I'm not his best friend. What he said, you apparently what he's, are. But what I'm saying what he's, is, this is a huge job that he's holding on to. He's not part of it. Hold on a second. Say the guy's not, I am not done. Please stop. I am not I done. Forgot. Hold on. Hold on. Lee, just stop for no. just a second. <laughs> just that? stop. No, no, no. I want to just... Let's clear the decks for oh, one yeah, second. Oh, yeah, please. Absolutely. So that we can all stop talking at the same time, and then you can continue. Go ahead. It is not partisan to say that Pete can't do this job. It is practical. It is about keeping the country safe. It is about the safety of our troops. He is being hired... He has been potentially hired to run the world's largest and most lethal military force. You cannot play games with that. And this man has too many skeletons in his closet to put him in charge of such a large okay. organization. Let me Please deal, let, let me, me review, but we are broken by your behavior and your lack of character. Mm -hmm. When you wrote that, what's the backstory? What was going on that made you so angry you wanted to write that? Well, I will tell that story in a moment, but let me make two statements first, and one is to President Trump. And I want to say thank you for your belief in my son. Uh, we all believe in him. We really believe uh, that he is not that man he was seven years ago. I'm not that mother. And I hope people will hear that story today and the truth of that story. So the other thing I want to say is I am here to tell the truth, uh, to tell the truth to the American people and tell the truth to the senators on the Hill, Right. especially our female senators. I really hope that you will not um, listen to the media and that you will listen to Pete. Well, my plan going forward, ongoing, is when I deployed, we had something called General Order Number 1. Uh, and in General Order Number 1, uh, it is you are not allowed to drink while you're on deployment, right? So if you're in Iraq and Afghanistan in a combat zone, you're not allowed to drink. That's how I view this role as Secretary of Defense is that I'm not going to have a drink at all. And it's not hard for me because it's not a problem for me. But I need to make sure the senators and the troops and President Trump and everybody else knows when you call me 24-7, you're getting fully dialed in, Pete, just like you always did in Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So this is the biggest deployment of my life, and there won't be a drop of alcohol uh, on my lips while I'm doing it. Mm -hmm.
briefly just how your meeting with Ernst went. It's a pool camera. Uh, Kristen, let me start with you on uh, Hegseth and how this is uh, looking, because it does seem like what's coming out of Mar-a-Lago in the last 24 hours has really changed in tone. Uh, I think that what Lindsey Graham is on the Hill saying uh, about him is uh, pretty significant. Uh, your sense of whether Trump is really willing to go to the mat as we learn more about Pete Hegseth, when apparently he didn't tell them a lot of this, and he could have. So my sense is that Republican senators want to get to yes on as many of these choices as possible. They are not relishing the thought of a fight with Donald Trump. And frankly, Matt Gates, who had been nominated for attorney general and then withdrew, that was going to be, I think, the spiciest fight of all of them. So with him then stepping down, I wonder to what extent Republican senators are thinking, OK, if we put pressure on now for some of these more difficult choices, can we actually avoid a big fight with Trump in front of the cameras during hearings? Um, I think that's notable, that list of alternatives. Folks like Joni Ernst, Joni Ernst uh, from the Senate, very well liked in Trump world, would be very capable. Um, but I think these senators, they're not relishing a fight with Trump. I think they'd rather avoid it if they can. Right. Well, but pulling Hegseth out now would, of course, uh, avoid a, a public uh, uh, fight later. I mean, Mark Preston, I, I, it's like if, if you, the list of, of people that's going to replace you is already out there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I mean, as, I, as I the ship sails, like, noon, <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? Um, what's your sense of whether he can? I mean, this is a critical test day for him. We're expecting him to uh, appear in the media, possibly with his mother, who right. sent an email during his 2018 divorce, basically saying that he needed to seek help because of the behavior that he was mm. exhibiting toward women. Yeah, devastating. I mean, no matter what his mother says right now, I mean, what she said initially in, in, in that email, I think was the final nail in the coffin for Hegseth. You know, not only is it an important day for him, which I think it will probably be his last day, if not one of his last days, it's an important day for John, uh, John Thune, right? Now, somebody who has to tell Hegseth today, listen, you're not going to get through. Like, that's his job now as a Republican leader to try to clear the decks where there are problems, as, as Kristen was saying, try to get through as many people as possible. And you know what? Joni Ernst, I mean, what a twist on this. Joni Ernst is basically going to sink his, you know, we would think that he, she would sink uh, Hegseth's nomination. She could be defense secretary and, and she is very well liked. I mean, she is well liked. I mean, to add to that, you know, don't look now, but the Senate Republicans may have really found their backbone the last two weeks. I mean, you could see if, if, if what you're saying is true, they could have sunk both quietly sunk mm -hmm. Trump's nominees for attorney general and secretary of defense, despite this reputation of like, oh, they're doing loyal, they're just like overly loyal. And they're basically very quietly uh, telling Trump, you know, this person can get through, this person can't get through. Uh, Tony Ernst, you know, the one thing that she's going to have to over overcome is that she's been very supportive of Ukraine and its war against Russia. Right. A lot of sort of the MAGA base are very, very skeptical of her. Mm -hmm. And the way they aren't about Ron DeSantis. And Ron DeSantis, you know, despite the, the tensions between the two, the one thing about DeSantis that I've heard appeals to sort of some of the Trump team, the guy's a nerd. The guy's a wonk. And, <laughs> and, 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 Wait, so why does this appeal to the Trump team? Well, because the Pentagon is a huge, sprawling bureaucracy, bureaucracy right. and they feel like maybe he actually would be good for that. Let me say this. If, if DeSantis does become a Secretary of Defense, it, I mean, it, it, look, if, if he gets to the Senate, he, he will be confirmed. If he becomes in, we're talking about now a redrawing of what the MAGA uh, political party is going to look like, you know, in a couple of years. Because now Ron DeSantis is going to be taken out of Florida, where he knows he's been very successful. He's been a successful governor. Now he's going to get that foreign policy background, you, you, you know, with him. And then it's going to be J.D. who? Mm -hmm. You know, there's going to be... <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're setting up for, uh, yes, I mean, for, for DeSantis, definitely some significant steps towards another. The idea that he doesn't want to run for president again is probably, is, is, not, is not realistic. <laughs> um, Megan, but to that point, I mean, DeSantis likely, he at least has been publicly vetted in a presidential campaign, right? Well, right, and it's easier for senators to take a vote on him, right? They, they, I think that the senators don't want to have to publicly go against Trump here. They can do this quietly, and no one knows. They're, they don't become a target for the MAGA base or the Republicans. Um, outside that want to 